Hi folks, Philip with Schumann Projects here, and today we've got a project with and for the Shaper Origin router. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, it's a CNC router, but it's a little different. Instead of having a normal router table and XY gantry that move your spindle around, you actually move the router around yourself, and the Origin uses a camera and augmented reality to track where it is and position your workpiece and then it will actually move the spindle around independently to make sure that the bit is tracking right on line where it needs to cut. Now this has some pretty cool advantages. Um, it's small, it's portable, you can move it around. Um, you're not confined to so many inches by so many inches of workspace. Um, so it gives you some pretty, pretty cool advantages. Um, with any router that you have, uh, holding your workpiece down is kind of a big deal. It's especially true with the Origin because it doesn't come with a table that you can use to tape or glue or screw your, your workpiece down to, so you've got to come up with a system to hold it. I've been doing some research on different CNC vacuum hold-down tables that people use to keep their work in place and figured we'd give that a try to see how we could make that work with Shaper Origin. Let's get started. So we're starting with two pieces of 3 quarter inch MDF. We put down the Shaper tape and scan in the work surface. The different pictures of the dominoes allow the router to track where it is on the work surface while you're cutting. The next thing we do is we align the X and the Y axis uh, so that our piece is square within the scan in the origin. I went into Inkscape and actually created a file that has uh, hundreds of holes that are going to be where the vacuum goes down through the top of the table. We import that in and then go and set up how deep the holes are and what bit size I have. And then it's just a matter of grinding through the holes. This was a little bit of a torture test for the router for me. I wanted to see how it would do over a multiple hour run keeping track of what was going on and moving around different size uh, different sessions and it held up really well. It did a good job. Um, didn't have any problems with it losing registration or anything like that. So now we need to build a frame that's going to sit in between the top and the bottom. This is where the vacuum is going to be pulled in from the top. It started with a couple one and a half inch uh, pieces of MDF that I'd cut and glued out an external frame. We we'll want to make sure you use a lot of glue on here because this is intended to be airtight. I wanted to make sure I had a really good seal. Now that we have an external frame, I wanted to make sure that the top was well supported and wasn't going to bow or warp. So I made a number of internal supports that would sit in between the top and the bottom, but still allow the vacuum to be pulled through and the air to pull through the whole table. Some people will actually do different segments that they can hook up to different um, valves or pumps, uh, but for this one I was just wanting one big one and it worked out well that way. Hard to clamp down so I just used a bunch of heavy paint cans to make sure everything was flat and solid. So one of the things I wanted to do to make sure that I wasn't pulling air through any of the tops or sides was just put down some acrylic seal. This was just whatever I had left over from a previous project, nothing special, but something that was going to provide some uh, barrier to prevent that air from getting through. Now we're gluing the top on. want to make sure that it is lined up so that the holes aren't being blocked by any of the internal, internal um, segments that are holding everything together. Normally the shaper tape comes off pretty easily. Uh, I had left mine sit for uh, a number of days, probably at least a week, and that made it a little stickier to get off. So had I planned ahead, I would have actually left a hole for the vacuum to pull in from, but I hadn't really figured out what the plan was, so I actually went ahead and used the origin to cut out a square that was just the right size that I wanted to be able to go in from the side and have my vacuum pull in. So on tool it actually allows you to go draw shapes uh, so I was able to 
skin in the edge of the skin in the edge of the table, draw a rectangle that I wanted, and then actually go cut out the shape I did. Um, as always with CNC, you have to be paying attention to speeds and feeds and not cut too much off. So I actually did, I think, three passes on this to go through that inch and a half. Um, maybe a little conservative, but it worked out. So this actually shows the pocket mode for the origin, which is kind of cool. What it'll do is it will go, allow you to do a rough cut, remove most of the material, and then you can come around later and do a finishing pass. Now I needed a way to be able to hook up my shop vac to this, so I pulled up an old adapter I had for my shop vac to go to my uh, miter saw, and because I knew that fit on the end of my vacuum, worked on pulling that in so it would actually match up with the shape of the hole that I had just cut and the height of the table that we've made. We're using SketchUp here. SketchUp is a nice tool. It was really good to start learning when we first started with 3D printing. Uh, I know a lot of people have moved over to Fusion, but it's kind of still my go-to. It's easy to use. Uh, so there you have it. That's, that's a little flange designed Now we're 3D printing it. This is being printed in PLA with 100% infill. Wanted to make sure that this was actually going to be airtight and pretty rigid, so it worked out well. Once it comes off the printer, I actually spray it with a clear, clear acrylic to make sure any holes are filled. Put down some silicone sealant and screw that in. So here's our first test. Um, I took the extra MDF that I had out of the sheet we started with and kind of cut it into a couple different size plates. You can see that once you actually get it down, it's a pretty solid grip on here. I'm able to put basically all of my weight on pushing side to side. Um, the larger the piece, the stronger the grip is. You'll see here on this larger one that I really can't push it side to side. If I do pull up, it'll come up, but for the cuts we're doing, really side to side motion is what we're trying to prevent. So I put a lot of tape on a couple plates that I'm going to be reusing over and over again. I found that um, more tape actually helps keep the registration and the router on track and um, can make for a better experience. So I figured if this was going to be used over and over, I might as well commit a bunch of tape to it. So here's a test cut we're going to do. I've just got a little piece of scrap. I'll go in and do, do our little logo here. Um, I'm starting with a, a larger bit to rough out some of the uh, interior of the letters and then went back with a smaller bit to do finishing pass around the outside. You'll see in a minute here that uh, I forgot the main step of putting some clear coat down, especially on a soft wood like this pine. And uh, while the router did really well, the table did really well, my paint job was not terribly effective because the paint wicked up into the into the wood there. But anyway, super happy with how that uh, held together. So wrapping up, I'm really happy with how this turned out. It's one thing to watch videos of other people build one of these, but it's another thing to actually see your piece held down with your shop vac. So uh, if you're looking to build something like this, I encourage you to try it out. Um, some things we might change on this one, um, size. Uh, it's big. It was designed to fit the table, sit on top of the table saw, um, but ends up being actually really heavy. So I might actually try uh, making one that's a little smaller uh, just to make it a little bit easier to move around. Uh, another thing you could do is try swapping out 3 quarter inch MDF uh, for something thinner on the bottom. We don't care so much about it being really flat just to seal. I'm also thinking about putting some uh, solid wood on the sides so that when it is moved around it doesn't get banged up so much. Well, I hope this was interesting to you. I hope you learned something and uh, love to see what you're making on your CNC. 
Appreciate it if you like the video, share it, subscribe if you want to see more stuff that we're doing, the Schumann Projects. Thanks a lot.